Okay, hello again. Uh, in this video, we're going to go through a farm account question and the first part of a farm account question. The year we're going to be basing this question on is the 1999 Leaving Cert uh, question three farm accounts question. Um, so if we look at, first of all, I suppose what you're required to do in the question down here at the bottom, it says in the first part, you're required to prepare a statement of capital for the farm on the 1st of the 1st, 1998. So that's at the start of the year, the 1st of the 1st, the 1st of January, 1998. Okay. So a lot of the information down here will relate to during the year or at the end of the year. So you won't uh, usually be using a lot of information from here. Here we've got our receipts and payments or lodgements and payments um, uh, book for the farm for the year. So these items happened during the year. So a lot of these we won't be using, but some of them will indicate um, something about assets and liabilities that you owned at the start of the year or that you owed at the start of the year. And so we will take a little bit of information from here in the first part. And then up here, we'll be really using a lot of this information for the first part of the question because this talks all about the assets and liabilities of the farmers um, on the 1st of the 1st, 1998 at the start of the year. So that's what we're most interested. So back to what you required, a statement of capital for the farm on the 1st of the 1st, 1998. Um, that statement of capital will basically just be a list of assets um, and a list of liabilities. And then the value of the assets and the liabilities will be subtracting the liabilities from the assets. And what we're left with will be the value of the capital of the farm. Okay, basically what the farm is worth. Okay, so we'll uh, begin with uh, the heading. And this will just be here, uh, statement of capital. on the 1st of the 1st, 1998, or as at, if you like, the 1st of the 1st, 1998, okay? So first of all, we might start with the assets. So we'll have a heading over here, assets. We're going to have two columns of figures over here. Uh, so to find out all of the assets that the farmers owned at the beginning of the year, we first of all look at this information from the question. Among the assets and liabilities were land and buildings, 280,000. Okay, so here we go. Land and buildings, 280,000 in the first column. Okay, that's it. Next one, machinery, 50,000. That's that. Uh, the next one is going to be, let's see, electricity due. Well, that's a liability. That's money that the farm farmers owe, an electricity bill that they have yet to pay, they're due to pay. Milk check due, that's an asset. I'll talk about that in a moment, 2,200. Check due. So the idea of why that's an asset is that um, farmers are in the business of producing milk and selling milk. Now, generally speaking, farmers don't sell the milk directly to the public in a supermarket, but they sell the milk to some kind of cooperative or a creamery. Uh, so like... Um, uh, I suppose Kerry Group or, or somebody like that, Clona maybe. Um, they sell the milk to this cooperative, the cooperative then bottles the milk and uh, sells it on to retailers like Tesco's or Aldi or Little, and they then sell it to the public. So if there's a milk check due, a milk payment due, well then that's a payment that is due to the farmer from the cooperative. They delivered milk to the cooperative and they've yet to receive payment for it. So that's an asset, that milk check due, money owed to the farmers. Okay. Next one, so that was milk check due. Value of cattle, 56,000, that's an asset. Uh, the farmer's cattle is an asset. It's part of the stock of the farm, the livestock of the farm. So cattle, 56,000. Next one we hear is, or we have here is sheep, 17,000. Same idea, sheep are 
valuable animals to the farmer. Your assets. Sheeps, I said sheep, rather. Uh, 17,000. Uh, next, stock of fuel, 700,000. So that's certainly an asset. Uh, the diesel or oil that the farmer has on the farm, 700. Stock of fuel. Okay, and that's all that we have listed on top. Now, um, what we've got in here is some information from during the year, uh, but also some hints about other assets that we might have. And one of the um, assets uh, that we can check for straight away is, this is basically a receipts and payments account. It shows, first of all, how much money um, the farmer started with in their bank account at the start of the year. And if the amount of money is on this side, on the lodgement side, the balance at the start is two. 2500 it means they had 2500 euros in their account if the balance were on this side it means that at the start of the year they were had an overdraft or they owed 2500 so if they had 2500 in their account at the very beginning of the year beginning of the year is the first of the first 98 that's also an asset so that goes up here bank uh, 2500 Okay, and then uh, as well as that, if we look down through here, these are all the things that they lodge money into the bank account during the year. So they got money for their milk during the year, that much they lodged in the account, they sold some sheep and cattle, etc. Uh, if we go down to the very end, this item here indicates an asset was owned at the start of the year. It says six months interest was earned from an 8% investment and that came to 800 euros. So. Uh, if they earned interest from an investment, it means that they had an investment and an investment is an asset. So we need to work out what the value of the investment was. So if it's six months interest is 800, we'll just do the calculations here in a moment. Down here. If six months is equal to 800, then in one year or 12 months, that investment would earn 1600, provided it's earning a fixed amount every year. Okay, so if the investment was due to earn 1600 uh, euros per year, and the investment is an 8% investment, as we see here, that means that the investment should earn 8% of its value. Uh, in interest each year. So if it should earn 1600 each year and it should earn 8% of its value, then this 1600 must be 8% of its value. So if we do the maths on that and we say 1600 is equal to 8%, the method I would use is I'd work out what's 1% first of all. So I divide by 8, dividing that by 8 gives you 1, dividing this side by 8 is. Um, twos. So 1% 1 is 200. Then I'd multiply both sides by 100 to get 100%, which is the value of the investment. And 100 times this is 20,000. Okay, so if 8% is 1600, then 100% 100 is 20,000. And the 100% represents the value of the investment. You have an investment or the farmers have an investment worth 20,000. And they earn 8% of it each year, which is 1600. Uh, and that investment is an asset which must go in here. 20,000. Investment. Okay, so I just paused the video there for a second and I added up all of the value of all of the assets. I added them all together and I got a total of 428,400. So that's all the assets for a start. Our next part is to add up the value of all of the liabilities and take that total from this to work out our capital. So heading first, liabilities. And liabilities, yeah. Uh, and so we have a look again up on top here, first of all, and we can skip over all of the assets we did already, land and buildings, machinery, and the first one we come to, first liability we come to, is electricity due 350. So here we go. Due 
50 euros. Perfect. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll just have a quick look. I don't think there are any other liabilities up there. Okay, there are not. However, again, the receipts and payments account down here will give a hint or an indication that there were other liabilities at the start of the year. There were two other liabilities at the start of the year, in fact. So what it shows on this side is all the monies that were paid out during the year. So bought fertilizer, paid 2,900, bought sheep for 18,000, paid wages to our dairy employees, 1700 etc but the thing that uh, indicates that we had some liabilities or stuff that we owed at the start of the year is down here it says the acc loan and 15 months interest at eight percent per annum on the 31st of third 1998 so we paid back a loan and 15 months interest during the year on the 31st of the third and the amount we paid back was uh, 16,500. okay so if we paid back a loan and 15 months interest three months into the year that means at the start of the year we had that loan which is a liability so that must be written down but also if we owed 15 months at three months into the year if we go back three months then three months ago at the start of the year we must have owed 12 months and then as the year rolled on 13 months 14 months and by the time we get to the third month of the year we owed 15 months but at the start of the year we must have owed 12 months interest we were behind in our interest payments so the thing we must do next is figure out how much of that 16,500 is the loan itself and how much of that 16,500 is the 15 months interest and then from that 15 months interest we must work out how much 12 months interest would be because that's the amount of interest that you owed at the start of the year we're not interested in those other three months interest that you uh, accrued from the start of the year up until 31st of the 3rd 1998 okay so here's how we go about it 16,500 is the loan and 15 months interest we'll do our workings down here 16,500 is equal to loan plus 15 months interest So what we're going to do is convert these into percentage of the loan. So if we take the loan as being 100% and then the interest, 15 months interest, is some percentage of the loan. Now we know that, if we look at it here, we know that we pay in interest 8% per annum every year. Per year we pay 8%. So if this was 12 months, we'd be saying plus 8% because it's 8% for every 12 months. But 15 months is actually 15 over 12. It's actually one year and three months. Or if you like, it's one year and a quarter of a year. So one year's interest is 8%. That'd be for 12 months. For another three months, it'd be a quarter of a year and a quarter of 8% is 2%. So 16,500, when we paid back the complete loan and 15 months interest, which is 12 months and three months, we paid back 110%. So that means that 16,500 is equal to 110% of the loan. So what we can do is Again, using the same method we used over here, we can figure out what 1% is. And we can figure out what 100% is from that, and that'll give us the amount of the loan. 100%. So, uh, 110,000, or 110 divided into uh, 16,500. I better make sure I'm doing this properly. I'll do it in the calculator. Is 150. So 1% is 150 euros and if I multiply 150 by 100 I get 15,000 so the loan that we owed at the start of the year was a 15,000 euro loan so we'll put that in up here first loan 15,000 the next thing is though we did owe 12 months worth of interest at the start of the year we mentioned that already so if we want to get um, 12 months interest we start with how much is the 15 months interest uh, that we were talking about well 
if 16,500 is the loan and 15 months interest, 15,000 is the loan. If I subtract 15,000 from the 16,500, I will have the value of the 15 months interest. So, 15, no, sorry, 16,500 minus 15,000 gives me 1,500, and that is equal to 15 months interest. Now, if I want 12 months, I could divide here and here by 15 to get one month. So dividing that by 15 gives me 100. Dividing this side by 15 gives me one month. And if I want 12 months, I multiply both sides by 12. 12 times this is, oops, 1,200. So the interest I owed at the start of the year was 1,200. So if I put this up here, loan interest. So again, I just repeat it. By the time I paid back the loan and the interest on the, it says, the 31st of the 3rd, 1998, I owed 15 months interest. But I only want to know how much interest I owed at the start of the year, the 1st of the 1st, 1998. So I go back three months, or three months less than 15 months, it's 12 months. That's what I want to know. That's how much interest was owed at the start of the year. So that's all of the liabilities then at the start of the year. If I add the three of these together, we're talking about what? 550. And uh, that's 16,000. So that's all of the liabilities, all of the assets. If I subtract the liabilities from the assets, I'm going to pause for a second. So there I just subtracted the liabilities from the assets. I got a figure of 411,850. And then I call that my capital or the farmer's capital at the start of the year. If you like, capital on 1st of the 1st, 98.